Dean Ashbet. It's good to have you with me in the lounge today. Uh, in the mobile lounge, on the drive home. Welcome to the drive home. It is the Friday edition of the drive home. And I am so glad to be with you all today. How's everybody doing? How y'all doing? How was your week? Was your week okay? I hope it was. Watch the fanboys complain about the Perry White cast. Somebody might. You know, that's the, and that's what we're talking about today. What's up, Kaden? What's up, DL? I'm, yeah, right, DL? So, I'm so glad that you brought it up, DL, because, hey, what's up, Austin? Um, <laughs> my first thought was, I mean, like, look, it's cool, right? It's cool. Uh, I love Lawrence Fishburne as Perry White. That right there, I mean, Lawrence Fishburne as Perry White. Like, it just doesn't matter. It was just great casting, right? Oh, hey, what's up, Richard? You know, like, I remember watching him in Man of Steel and just thinking to myself, you know, it was just great. And I've said it many, many times that, you know, there's all there's always controversy, it seems like, over uh, when they, you know, race swap a character, excuse me, or they gender swap a character, uh, you know. And I'm always of, of the mind this. I don't care, as long as it makes sense. Uh, some of the stuff that we see with with the race swapping of characters, you know, uh, in comic book movies or IPs that we know like that, like, it just, a lot of times it just doesn't make much sense, you know? Uh, what's up, Shayna? What's going on? Hello there. See what she did? See what she did? She did that on purpose. The whole hello there. Yeah. She's good like that. Oh, yeah, she is. Uh, so, but the whole race swap thing with, you know, Perry White and Man of Steel, it didn't matter. Like, there was there was nothing about it because Lawrence Fishburne was just fantastic. Lawrence Fishburne just knocked it out of the park. At no point was I sitting there in Man of Steel or Batman v Superman for that matter or anything that Lawrence Fishburne played Perry White in, uh, right? I'm sorry, but at no point did I think, oh my gosh, uh, a black guy is playing Perry White. It didn't matter because Lawrence Fishburne was playing Perry White. He absolutely was embodying Perry White. I mean, it was it was great. Um, you know, and then there's, you know, some of the, the stories of, of movies and stuff that, uh, some of them get made, some of them don't, you know, like we've talked a lot about, uh, the, um, uh, oh, I can, I can never pronounce the first name right, but, uh, Coke, uh, Terry, somebody's gonna have to help me, uh, the guy who's, who's writing the, uh, the Black Superman movie. Tala, 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 something like that. Anyway, you you know what I'm talking about. So we have talked about that movie uh, a lot, right? Um, and so that if if they're gonna make a Calvin Ellis movie or a Val Zod. Like William and I have talked here on the channel. It's been a while since we had the conversation, actually, because we have some stream much. But you know, we talked about we talked about the fact that um, uh, to do those movies makes sense because they're uh, right, right. I mean, DL, you got DL and William, who are both black men, right? And neither of them want to see that movie. I still have yet to talk to a black person about that movie and have them say it in a positive way that that, that they that they would want a Clark Kent who's black. And that's what we're talking about, right? Yeah, Caden Caden was talking about that right there, right? That like Valdod, he's black in the comics. It, that's the character. Calvin Ellis, you know Right, exactly, William. I'm I'm totally down for black Superman. Bring it on. Give me Calvin Ellis. All 
all day long, man. That's a story that's interesting because I've always thought that, and I've said it many times here on the channel. And it's like, if if you got a character like that, that man, people can go to the movies and see themselves in that character, be inspired by that character, and I mean, and it's Superman. It's still Superman, right? So, like, you've got that aspect to it. He's Superman, uh, but he's not just a, a retread. It's not just Clark Kent, but black, right? You know, because like, like we we're talking about, like they wanted. Uh, apparently the, the WB execs wanted Zack Snyder to possibly put, you know, Superman growing up in Chicago. Like, it didn't matter. If it's Clark Kent, it matters. Like, it's, it's part of who the character is, right? So we've, we've talked about that. And just being fair, right, about uh, casting, you know? I think it's harder to do a gender swap than the race swap. Because, let's be honest, I mean, actors, if they can act, we're going to feel it. The gender swap, yes, still, if they can act, you're going to feel it. But many times it's like something that's like so far different that you just forget what you're watching. I, I, I guess part of me wants to just say, like, I don't understand why all these directors and writers and everything, they can't look at some of these properties... Uh, and understand what makes them popular. How do you have how do you have movie studios who own IPs that they don't understand what makes the IP popular? And we end up not getting what makes the IP popular. We get somebody else's interpretation of it. they what they want to do, and, and half the time it's not even a, it has nothing to do with the character, a la Superman lives in a giant spider, right, that, you know, Superman was supposed to face, so it's just, it's just silly sometimes, you know, but, like, I'm down for, for fun stuff, I'm, I'm down for all we can get, uh, (laughs) yeah, so, you know, I, I don't know if that Superman movie will actually get off the ground or not, who knows, I mean, they're saying that it's there still, but uh, I don't know, right? Uh, hey, Lane, what's going on? Good to see you, bro. Uh, upcoming uh, Pierce. Yeah. So Wendell Pierce is our new uh, Perry White, and I think it's cool that I, I, I you know, no, I, I don't think it's cool just that like they, they cast a black man as a, as, as a character, right? That, that's not what's cool about it. They cast a great actor in a great role. Period. Period. And, you know, Lane, my thing about this whole thing is, is that I am trying to remain fair. I'm trying to remain objective because... That's what we should do. It should be like any other movie. Like, if this was any other movie, people would not be doing the things they are now. I, I'll be honest with you, and, and I know that I've harped a lot on this this week in my return back to streaming, but it's so true. Because I do want to differentiate my thoughts, uh, you know, coming back into movie talk and, and these thoughts of, of these things. I mean, like, I'm sorry, but the fandom that I've been a part of for years now, a good portion of that fandom has literally just lost their minds. I mean, at one point, we were telling people that they should, you know, that they should wait for for the movies to come out before they judge them and stuff, you know, and that, that uh, you know, we shouldn't just be pre-judging stuff and, act, you know, wanting it to flop. Like, why? You know, we, we've been in a position of saying, you know, like, why do people just hate on Zack Snyder so much. Why Why is it that we just have to hate his stuff even before it comes out? People mocking it, making fun of it. You would think that we would be in a better place. Unfortunately, what ends up happening a lot of times is hurt people end up hurting others. And so now you have this thing of like, I, I was thinking about David Cordsweat today. Imagine being David Cordsweat. Right? The dude gets to play Superman. He gets to play Superman. 
that's like a dream come true type of role, right? Now, look, sure, there are some actors who in the past they have they have turned down. By the way, can you guys hear me all right? I think I left my Bluetooth on, and when I do, it records weird on the phone. Uh, I can see if I can change that. If it, if it, but um, I feel like it sounds like I'm on the phone when I do this instead of, like, blank in the camera. I just... I want this movie to succeed. I want Superman by James Gunn to be the greatest Superman movie ever. Because it's not about, well, this is my favorite director over here, so I don't want anybody to ever do something that's not going to be as good as his. And this is, you know, William knows, because we, we were both part of these Superman groups on Facebook and everything, you know, and these people who are just all the time about Christopher Reeve. Christopher Reeve. There could be no longer ever be another Superman except for Christopher Reeve because we love Christopher Reeve. We love Christopher Reeve. Henry Cavill sucks. Everybody else sucks because of, of Christopher Reeve. And now Henry Cavill fans are doing the exact same thing. Everybody else sucks except for Henry, Henry Cavill. We can't give David Corn Sweat even a chance because of Henry Cavill. You don't have to hate something just because you love something else. You know? Like, we don't have to do that. And we should le- we should have learned better. Like, this is what we've been telling other people. Please don't do this. Like, act better. Learn. Grow. Act like an adult. And now you got people doing the exact same thing. The exact same thing. Acting like nobody can ever be Superman again. You know, I, I see over and over and over again. You know, uh, Henry Cavill's the best. No one will ever, ever be as good as him. You, you never want anybody play Superman again? Okay, DL. Yes, okay. John Williams. So, my take on the whole John Williams thing is I really hope they don't use the music. I really do. I mean, I I know there was a a TikTok today where, you know, they, you know, Lois, Clark, and Superman, and, you know, they, they use the, the the music, and that's fine. I mean, that's fine. That you know, and I even I think I reposted it someplace. I was like, you know, that's that's great. I I don't have a problem with that at all, right? Uh, sure. Let them have uh, let them have the Superman music in that to to talk about it, and you know, and to like uh, be excited about it or whatever. But the problem is, this is not that Superman. You know, this is not that Superman. So why would you put that music in there? You know what I mean? It, it doesn't really make sense. I get it. People love that music. It, it's great. The music itself, there's nothing wrong with. Hey, what's up, Shifty? Give them. Uh, yeah, no, the music itself, there is absolutely, I mean, John Williams' theme from Superman 78 It's classic, you know? I've had that in my head since I was a little kid. So, but why? Why will they need that John Williams music? William, it's it's not, it's not that Superman. Superman. It doesn't even look like it's going to resemble that Superman. I mean, this is this is like us getting like something totally new, right? I mean, new and fresh and different. Okay, if you got to, maybe put it in as like a little nod, you know, like dun 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 dun. Okay, and then we should be done with it. But please, I'm really praying that it's not the main theme. It's not a unifying theme, and you know it. Now, it is not a unifying theme at all as evidenced by the fact that people are complaining about it. It's not a unifying theme anymore. 20 years ago, sure. But the thing is, is now with the great divide in DC fans, it is not uh, it, it is not a, a, a unifying thing. It's not a unifying theme at all. Everybody loves it. 
I think even the people who, you know, who don't want to see it, you know, don't want it in the movie, like, like me, I don't want, uh, I don't want it in the movie, but I still love it, you know, it's just like yesterday when I was talking about the Kingdom Come Superman, uh, crest, I'm, I'm down for it, right, all the people who've, like, been mocking it, and they're like, oh, look at it, it's a downgrade and everything, well, just tell us all that you don't really know Superman, that you don't really care about Superman, or his history, or anything, and it's, look, it's just evidence, it's not even a dig at them, because so many, so many people have talked about how they, they were not a fan of Superman at all, until, uh, Man of Steel, right, until, uh, Zack Snyder's movies, and hey, that's great, but here's what you got to understand, if that's where you came in, and, and Henry Cavill is your favorite, look, Henry Cavill is mine, Christopher Reeve was my favorite Superman, all growing up, all growing up, until I went into that theater in 2013, and watched Man of Steel, and that was the Superman movie I always wanted to see, it was grounded, it was real, it, it, it it showed Clark as being the real person. Remember, I talked about uh, yesterday as well that I don't want to see Nerdy Clark. Nerdy Clark doesn't exist anywhere else. Nerdy Clark was a Superman 78 thing. I don't want to see that again either, right? And even, you know, and even like I said, like, okay, they're using the Kingdom Come logo. They better do something that connects at least to that storyline. I mean, even if it's 10 years from now and they finally get to the end of this 10-year plan or whatever, and that's Kingdom Come. They like they do the Kingdom Come storyline or something, you know? Like, okay, that'll be worth it. I'll even take that. And you don't even have to tell me that's coming, okay? But if at the end of the day there is no Kingdom Come Superman angle, you shouldn't be using that logo. Because it's not just a Superman logo. It's not just an S. It's a very specific insignia. It's a very spe- uh, specific crest from a very specific Superman. So when you see that Superman, you identify it as that. It can't just be like, I love Alex Ross, and I love his Superman. That's great. So do I. I love his paintings. I love his his drawing. But he literally created... Um, I really prefer that logo on Kingdom Come and nothing else, but that's perfect. Yeah, like, look, William, I'm there too, right? If, if, that's case, I like that logo, but I like it only for the Kingdom Come Superman. I don't like it for the, the regular super, Superman logo, but I would even go, right? Exactly, William, that, you hit it, you just nailed it. That story represents a story and era. It is specific, So, I don't know. I, I really hope that it's not just a throwaway of like, oh, I, I like that, that logo, you know, so. Whatever, you know. Uh, even if they tell something kind of like it, where it's like Superman is inspiring heroes, but when he's young. I could even go for that at least as, as long as it makes sense, you know. But I I love this casting, though, for, for Perry White. I think it's going to be great. Um this cast already, I, I, I don't understand the, the criticism I see to this cast, it, it's rude, it's, uh, it's just not right, it's, it's pathetic, honestly, all the, all the people that I see, uh, saying all these negative things, mocking the cast, and saying, oh, it's like, it's like you ordered the Superman cast from Wish, no, I'm sorry, they all look really, really great in this they look like those characters. David Cornsweat is going to be a good Superman. Everybody complained, well, he looks too much like Cavill. That's a problem? Oh, yeah, because why didn't they just get Cavill? Because it's a reboot. It's a different story. You need a different actor. Kind of what you do. Nobody plays a role forever. You know? And I, look, and don't come at me with, like, well, they did this, they did this, Warner Brothers. I, I know. 
I know, and I'm still upset about that. It doesn't change the fact that I'm upset about that stuff, but also I'm not going to spend my life just angry about everything. And by the way, um, I'll be pulling in here in a minute, and then I will answer questions. I know a couple people asked me some questions, so I'll get to those questions. So make sure you get your questions in there because I'm driving. I don't want to be reading it while I'm doing that. But, so I, I like this uh, this casting. I think this movie's going to be fine. I think this movie's going to be good. I'm, I'm, I'm getting hyped for this movie. Right? Uh, so, what are my thoughts on the reverse and a Teen Titans movie as reported in the first DC? Okay. Teen Titans movie would be cool. As long as it's done well. I love the show Titans, so y'all can come at me for that, too. There's so many people, ah, Titan sucks. Based on what? That, I'm sorry, but Titan, the show actually, when that thing debuted, it's actually what got me into the character more of Dick Green. I have been, I've always liked, I've, I've always, Dick Green has always been my favorite Robin, okay, but, man, Dick Grayson in Titan. was so kick butt. I mean, but everybody, and, and, I, and I've met, uh, what's his name who plays, you know, Dick Grayson, I've met, uh, 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 Nick Curran or something, uh, who plays, uh, Jason Todd. I mean, he was perfect as Jason Todd. The only problem that I ever had with Titans was when they did the switch over to Red Hood, uh, just because they did it in three days instead of 18 years or whatever it was, but, I, or, you know, 15 years or whatever, 10 years or whatever. Uh, I can't think right now. But you know what I mean? Like, yes, it made me respect Dick Grayson. And so, uh, yeah, those guys are those guys were really cool to me. They they were they were super nice. There's no sound. I have no sound. How did the sound go off? Hold on, just one second. I'll be right back. Whoa, music came on. Is that better? Sounds back. Okay, cool. That was weird. I don't know why the sound would have gone away. I didn't do anything. I didn't touch anything. Um, is the sound better now? Whose version of Lex was amazing? Oh, Michael Rosenbaum. Michael Rosenbaum is the perfect Lex Luthor. Even James Gunn, man, when James Gunn was on the Michael Rosenbaum uh, podcast uh, recently, he told him, "You are the you are the best Lex Luthor." He was. I'm sorry. I really like Jesse Eisenberg, and I won't I won't back down from that uh, because he's he's dead on for the for the Lex Luthor that they were trying to portray. If people if people have a problem with that Lex Luthor, it's because they don't know. Him the vastness of Lex Luthor. Again, here's the problem with Superman. This is the biggest problem with Superman. Nobody seems to know anything about Superman's past. Nobody seems to know anything about who Superman is in the comics currently. I don't know why there was like a snapshot taken of Superman, it seems like, in the 50s. 60s and 70s and that's just what people think Superman is they just think he's cheesy they think he's you know uh, boring all those things and Superman hasn't been that in years you know I mean it, it blows me away it really does blow me away that, that people just don't understand that character it, it's not hard folks it's really not hard. Every, all these people are like, Superman wouldn't do that. Superman wouldn't do that. He didn't do it in the Christopher Reeve movie, so he wouldn't do it. No, that's not, that's not the end-all, be-all. Again, that is one version. There are many different versions and interpretations of Superman. And I'm here for all of them. Even Superman Red and Blue. I mean, it could have been a whole lot worse, right? I mean, we, 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 could, have, we could have gotten a... a Superman, electric Superman, blue and, and red. 
Can you imagine that? Oh, you guys remember when that storyline came out in the 90s? Where Superman was like electric blue. Oh, that was rough. So, and the funny thing is, I could actually see James Gunn like pulling something like that off, but, uh, you know, but that's not where we're at, right? So, um, what is going on here? Walking down the street, weird stuff. Check my mail real quick. You guys get to come home with me every day from work. It's fun spending this time with you guys. I wonder if Shane is still. So now let me get to some of these questions that you guys have been, uh, Michael is the standard for Lex right behind Clancy. That's fine, Anthony. You know, like for me, he's just the standard, man. Clancy's okay. He's, I know it's the animated series, but I, as much as I think the animated series is awesome, I feel like it gets... How do I want to say this? It's amazing. The, the, the animated, the Superman, the animated series is great, but it's not perfect. Oh, you're going to go see Dune on Sunday, Shana? Cool. I don't know where I will be. Um, you know, are you seeing Dune Part 2? Oh, that's why. Uh, no, I'm not seeing Dune Part 2 this weekend. Um, I, I just wasn't a fan of Dune Part 1, and so I'm, I'm not going to go spend money on it. When, it. when it comes on to streaming, I'll watch it or something. Um, but I just, I'm, I'm not a fan of Dune. I, I don't hate it on it. You know, every, it, everybody has their thing. It's just not me. Um... See, it's not a it's not lost on me that we're never ever that we've never ever had a bad actor for Perry White. Glad to see the new uh Superman movie is continuing that trend by casting Wendell Pierce. You know just Justin? Justin Shields said that. That's a great point. We really have not had a bad Perry White. Huh. That that's a good point. Um but yes, Michael Rosenbaum is the perfect Luther. Uh, Michael Rosenbaum played last year. Okay. You know, I saw a video that says Clone Wars doesn't hold up. Do you think? Oh, come on, Anchorman. We know that's silly. Um, sounds a lot better. Yeah, see, usually I turn the, the Bluetooth off. And when I turn the Bluetooth off, it's just the, the microphone of the camera. So, uh, um, yeah. It never left. What? I can't remember the guy's name. Sound is good. I hear you. Hear you now. Good, 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 good. What did you say, Shana? It never left. I don't know, but yeah, it's better. Oh, okay. No, the sound never left for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, forgot him. Okay, I'm trying to get some of you guys' comments. Uh, loved it, Grayson. Awesome. I think my favorite version of Lex was on Smallville. What's up, Bradley? What are your thoughts on the Teen Titans? I said that already. Uh, I would argue that besides maybe Kevin Spacey, we haven't had an accurate depiction of Lex in live action. Uh, how it has an opportunity to bring Lex to life? So I, I would just, yeah, Austin, I would disagree with that. Um, just because, one, Kevin Spacey, he was kind of wasted. He didn't really do anything. You know, it was just, it was, it was, he was just trying to copy Gene Hackman. He threw in some of his own, he looked great. Okay. For what he did, he was great. But for my money, man, the conniving, you know, I think he was on the show a total of seven years, man, that, uh, Michael Rosenbaum was Lex Luthor. Oh, wow. All right. Uh, let's see. 
uh, Wolf Wolves in the Mist says, Enosh, question, am I wrong for thinking I want a Superman movie without Lex? I mean, that story has been done to death. They need to give another of his villains a chance. You know, Lex Luthor is an interesting uh, thing, Wolves, because uh, Lex could be the main villain of a movie. Um, but you know, the funny thing is, is he doesn't have to be. He doesn't have to be the villain of this movie. Lex is just... Lex technically is just a part of the background. Depending on what Lex they, they do. I, I'm hoping they're going for billionaire Lex. You know? That it's, it is it is businessman Lex and not, you know, just evil dude Lex. You know, that he's just a, you know, a criminal. Because that's what I didn't like about the Kevin Spacey thing. Because they just made him a regular criminal then, you know, like just like in Superman 78. Where at least when he's the billionaire guy, man, he's conniving, he's shysty, he's doing all these things behind the scenes. He's killing people, he's hurting people, he's, he's enacting all these issues and stuff, you know. Good stuff. Um, if I were to say who is the best Perry White, I would say Lane Smith from Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman. He was really good, too. Uh, you're right. Uh, you know, I don't like Smallville, but that Lex is probably the best live action. It's a good sign when Gunn loves Rosenbaum's portrayal. I agree with that, DL. Yes. Uh, it doesn't matter any Superman stuff. Lex always have to be there because it's a part of the contract. Um, I just think it's good that Lex is in that world. Right, the, it's it's important that Lex Luthor because Lex Luthor, even if he's not the main villain, Lex always has his hand in something, right? So no matter what villain comes along, Lex is going to be watching. Lex is going to be uh, interested, right? Uh, Lex is going to be trying to get himself involved somehow, right? So, um, yeah, so it's it's, it's interesting. Lex Luthor is Superman's Joker, but you know, the interesting thing about that too, though, is Lex Luthor is, is kind of more than that because the Joker is the quintessential Batman villain, right? But Lex, even though he is Superman's antithesis, he's also a background character in so much as the rest of the world doesn't know that Lex is this bad guy. So it's it's different characters, right? So you can have Lex in the movie even without him being the villain, but show him interested. Show him paying attention to the way people are doing things and who's doing what, you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, I know. I'd love to see Lobo, Azteca. I, I, I'd love to see Brainiac, man. I, I want Brainiac so bad, it's not even funny. I mean, I can't believe that we've we've gone this deep into the decades since they've started making Superman movies and we still don't have Brainiac as a villain proper in a Superman movie. How, how have we made all these Superman movies and TV shows and stuff and things and, and we don't have him? I don't know, but I digress. But yeah, so casting news today, it's cool. Superman Returns is uh, Shifty Gizm. I agree with that, right? I definitely agree with that. Uh, that now, see, Lobo's character was good on Krypton, but the the actor was not. He, he his acting was fine, but he did not have the body for that, the body type at all. Like he didn't. He looked. It looked like literally they took a skinny guy, put a wig on him, and said, "This guy's Lobo." So like his character was kind of right, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, me too, Bradley. I, I'd like to see some of it. Hey, what's up, Layla? Good to see you. A new dawn is upon us. Bizarro would be cool to say. Yeah, that's what, that is what we were just saying, Shayna. Yep, me and Shayna having these nerdy discussions. Um, but absolutely, Jason will do Lobo good when it comes time for him to debut. Uh, Mingus would be epic. Take Superman off world. Danny Trejo in his prime would have been perfect for Lobo. Oh my gosh. You are not even kidding. Holy cow. Uh, what's up, Caleb? 
What's up, my friend? Hey, man. I miss you, buddy. I hope you're doing well. I, I, I really do. Um, it's been a while since we've talked. Uh, Lex is totally going to be the Megacorp uh, CEO billionaire, but I'd love it if he was an engineer scientist too. Like he's constantly got blueprints in his office and machines and stuff he's building. Yeah, I mean, that'd be cool. I mean, because he's a genius, right? So why would he not, you know, have those things at his disposal? Uh, Mongol. Mm, Mongol would be good. Uh, I want to see my favorite Robin live action. I just want to see a flesh and blood Jason Todd. Ooh, that would be good too. I, yeah, I'd love to see that. Um, hey, Anchorman, don't encourage it, please. No, because even if they are, like, we're not going to encourage that. We're not going to, we're not going to do that. Like, we're not talking about it anymore. It, it's done. It's done. Mods, if you see somebody coming in, anybody coming in like that with any of those screen names, any of that stuff, just block them. Immediately just block them. We're not, you, don't, you don't even have to time them out. Just block them. There's no point. There's no point. If people are so dumb that they, that they just want to talk about my love life, good on them, but I got better things to do. Um, I, got, I got a young lady to go in and see and say hi to. So there you go. Uh, but you know, Anthony, the funny thing is, man, isn't it great though? That like, it's kind of a funny position to be in where it's like, people care so much about me. <laughs> Imperiax would be cool to see in a DC live action movie. You know what? No, Anchorman, you don't have to be sorry, man. That's, that's, that wasn't the point. I was just saying, let's, let's not encourage people to, to do that. Who would my casting be for a live version of Jason Todd? We were just talking about yesterday about Timothy Chalamet and like how his age portrayals are like all over the board. I feel like Timothy Chalamet could play a teenage Jason Todd. Because I don't think we want to see a little kid, right? So to have an older teenager Jason Todd would make sense. Enosh versus Homelander. Right, I, you know, and I was just saying, ah, see, Azteca, we we had this conversation yesterday, right? Uh, and Shifty gives him. Uh, this is what I said yesterday. This is exactly what I said yesterday. He's too young looking. He cannot pull Nightwing off. He does not have the physicality. Okay, he may be a good actor, but he does not have the physicality. We need those three hour long live streams. I know, I know. We we've, we've been going thirty eight minutes. <laughs> hey, I've been doing about an hour to about seventy five minutes lately. We'll get back up there. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like Timothy Chalamet, he's, he's a smaller guy, man. And, um, yeah, D, I'm just going by what I've seen so far, just in Dune one and just what I've seen out of him so far. Uh, I feel like he, he's more suited for the Jason Todd role than, uh, uh, than, than being Dick Grayson. I don't, I don't think he could do Nightwing. I, I wouldn't believe it. Uh, those three hour streams was crazy, baby. Dude, we did four and five hour streams. I got six hour streams that we did sometimes. Going from midnight till 6 a.m. There was times where I just like literally like laid down for five minutes, set an alarm, and got right back up and went to work. Uh, who's the most who's the most overrated actor in Enosh's opinion? Hmm. I don't know. I, man, overrated actor. Come back, I want to do a new show, do a cooking show called Phenoms. Phenoms. And the funny thing is, Shifty Gizm, I love to cook. And I've, I've already, got, I've got literally like two or three cooking videos already shot from like a year ago and just beyond, right? That I never got around to editing. You know, when, when Tiffany took off, I, 
I wasn't I wasn't gonna do the channel anymore, so I I stopped editing. I I wasn't gonna do it, but th those videos are literally still on my phone. I make um I make air fryer uh uh chicken, you know. Heck yeah, heck yeah. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, those. Uh, I need to get Enosh on a hot take show. Send all your requests in. All right. Also, uh, over this weekend, why don't you go ahead and, and uh, you know tweet me or message me uh, your ideas for uh, the drive home on Monday, okay? Or during the day, if something pops or whatever, let me know and uh, you know pop on in here on Monday, and uh, maybe you will see your topic on Monday's show. Uh, Caleb says, sorry about us not talking for a while. I had some hard times over the past couple years. I had some mental health issues. I was homeless for a bit. I'm kind of wandered for a bit, but I'm okay now. I'm glad to hear that, Caleb. Man, you've been a good buddy, and I appreciate it, man. You're, you're a good guy. I've been through some stuff this last year myself, man, if you can't tell. Uh, so, yeah. But you know what? Life is good. Life goes on. Life goes on. And there's nobody in this world worth sitting around depressed for. And there's nobody worth uh, two cents on nonsense for life. No, I told you. Clone Wars is not overrated. We're over... Clone Wars is not overrated. It's not. Clone Wars is just, it's just a good movie. Or a good show, I mean. You know, it's like... That, that's all that is. So it's a good show. And and it still stands up. I, I don't understand people's... I, I don't understand fans, man. Fans are just weird these days. Who doesn't think it holds up? I mean, who? Who is, who is actually making that comment? You know what I mean? Like, who came up with that comment? That Clone Wars doesn't hold up? Because you know what? It, it most certainly does. It, it is what it is. Uh, sorry, guys. I got some in here in the car you know it's been a long week and uh <laughs> my red bull's out of here um but you know what i mean like no don't uh, uh who cares you know i mean like why why are, are max and rj talking again good good I'm, I'm really glad to hear that i did not know that uh, Clone Wars. Both of them was great shows. The movie, though, not so much. Yes. Now, Shifty Gizm, I will give you that, right? Uh, Shayna, she knows. Clone Wars adds so much to the story. And I even, you know what? I'll, I'm going to be absolutely transparent. I've watched most of, the star, uh, of Clone Wars, but I haven't watched all of it. Oh, oh because it ignores the expanded. How is it supposed to acknowledge the expanded universe? I don't know about that. I just, I just know this. I know that that show was great. I also know, as Shifty Gizm said, sorry, I'm like right up in your face here. There's an album cover for you. Um, I just know that uh, the movie was bad. Right? Yes. The movie was bad. Um, it just was. It, it, the, the movie wasn't good. It's it's the one time that I paid to watch a Star Wars thing, and I was like, what the heck did I just watch? And Landon didn't like it either. Landon was was uh, uh, was little, you know, uh, when we went to go see that movie. And Landon did not like it at all. And neither did I. And so that was that was pretty rough. You guys want to see something funny? You want to see something really funny? It is March 1st. <laughs> yep, it's March 1st. So, here's the thing, guys. So... I have never uh, put lights on the outside of a house, okay? Yeah, I have never, I've never done Christmas lights on the outside of a house anywhere that uh, 
Uh, I, it, whatever. Um, to where? To where? And here's the thing. It's my name anyways. Here's the thing. Yeah, so this is pretty hilarious because this year I decided to do this. And I'll full transparency, full transparency. Years ago, I kind of got out of the habit of even wanting to uh, um, do Christmas decorations. I love Christmas. I would wrap presents. I would participate in the Christmas spirit of everything. You know, we 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 had these big. You guys know we we brought you guys along with us for uh, 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 stuff. You know, for our Christmases and stuff, and so. It was funny because it didn't matter that I participated in everything else. One of the complaints about me apparently is, is you know, that I didn't put up the Christmas tree and I didn't put up Christmas lights. Uh, I never realized it was such a big deal. It was just kind of a thing. But whatever. So this year I said, screw it. I'm going to put up some Christmas lights. What's up, Antonio? I said, I'm going to put up some Christmas lights. So we, we, you know, decorated downstairs and outside and everything. And I have just not gotten around to taking them down yet i haven't it. so it's kind of funny you know uh but they're still up <laughs> i had a grogu here and it deflated so i gotta get that guy out of there but so there you go that's how busy i've been when people ask enosh are you really that busy yep did you take some down today, Shane? Shane has been over, like, literally cleaning, them, cleaning my house the last couple of days. It's been funny. All right, guys. I love you. I got to go get some stuff uh, packed up and, and done before I got to head out of here tonight. So I love you all. I will see you all later. Shana, I love you. I will see you um, later as well. All right. And, uh, hey, just remember, don't let anybody tell you that your fandom doesn't matter. Don't tell anybody that their fandom doesn't matter. But seek to have good conversations. And treat everybody with respect, for gosh sakes. And you know what? Wait till something comes out before you just hate on it, for God's sake. Please. All right, until next time, if you do those things, there'll always be a place for you here in the Poindexter Lounge. Stay nerdy.